Hi guys, I'm Charlie. This is my sister Kirby. Hey guys. Today we're hanging out in Arizona. I think somewhere near Winslow, right? Flagstaff is somewhere around here. Not really sure, but we are sure that we found something pretty wicked. Check it out. You made it! What's up? Welcome to Weird But True Headquarters! We'll call it HQ for short. HQ works. This is kind of like our clubhouse. It's like a workroom. Like a research room? Yeah. yeah. Like a research room. This is where we get all of our projects done. Like the big science projects, they happen here in headquarters. And today we got a pretty awesome one. Okay, so the craziest thing just happened and we're kind of on a tear about it. So we just got back from an absolutely terrific campground in Wisconsin. Go Badgers! The best part, that night sky. Oh man. Magical. Magical! Like someone just tossed a billion stars up there. Just tossed them on up. So many stars! In Chicago, where we live, there's so much light pollution that on most nights we're lucky to see the moon and... Just the moon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But that Wisconsin sky, we saw so many shooting stars. Kirby could hardly contain herself. This is amazing. You too. Shush. Some people are trying to sleep. Sorry. But then we had a little disagreement. Gotta love a good shooting star. They're asteroids, right? Pretty sure they're comets. I don't know, Charles. Pretty sure they're asteroids. Oh no, Curb. I'm pretty sure they're comets. They're asteroids. No, they're totally comets. Shush, you're both wrong. They're meteors. Meteors? Hadn't thought about meteors before. So we've got a bit of an issue on our hands. We've got asteroids, comets, and meteors, and we're not really sure what's what. They're asteroids. I know, but like the question is, what even is an asteroid? I have no idea. See, I don't know either. So that's what we're doing today. We're unraveling the world of... Space rocks. All right, so I'm pretty sure we got it all figured out. It turns out that all of these things, meteors, asteroids, and comets, can all be summed up as, wait for it, near-Earth objects. Near-Earth objects. Fun science word, near-Earth objects. NEOs are space rocks that come close to Earth. Nailed it. Right, so here are the players in the NEO game. So first we got comets, AKA dirty snowballs. Comets, all right. Basically these things are huge rocky ice chunks made out of ice. Rocks, gases, you know, the good stuff. They can be hundreds of meters long to 30 kilometers across, so they're pretty huge. If you check it out, on the inside is a rocky hard nucleus. On the outside, they're surrounded by this gas layer that makes up the tail. It's called the coma. It can be hundreds of millions of miles long. So, comets, dirty ice chunks. Next up, we got asteroids. Asteroids. These things are pieces of other planets that are a lot bigger than comets. Hundreds of times bigger than comets, so they're massive. Unlike comets, there's no ice, there's no gas, there's no tails. They're just giant, irregularly shaped rocks, which is really cool because they come in all sorts of weird shapes, like this. Asteroids. And then we've got meteoroids. Meteoroids. Meteoroids are super tiny space rocks. They're basically very small pieces of comets, asteroids, or other space things that are kind of floating around. They're metallic and can be as small as a grain of sand. Cool, cool. So, meteoroids. Super small space rocks. Weird but true, in ancient Greece, comets were called hairy stars. Easy enough. Yeah, right? But the cool thing happens when everything enters Earth's atmosphere. They become meteors. So you're saying meteoroids become meteors? No, man, everything becomes a meteor. All of it? Everything. Asteroids, comets, meteoroids. When they enter Earth's atmosphere, they all become meteors. But if they touch down on Earth, then they're called meteorites. Oh my gosh, do you know what I just realized? I think I just realized it too. The shusher. The dude from the campsite. Shush, you're both wrong. They're meteors. 
He was right! Crazy! All of the shooting stars we saw, they were all NEOs passing through the Earth's atmosphere, so that means they were all... No way! Meteors! Crazy! So smart! How'd that dude know? I don't know! You know what's next, right? What? We gotta learn what happens when they touch ground. Meteorites. Meteorites. Ready? Let's do it. All right, guys, we got to put together like a few art pieces, and then we'll have so much to show you, okay? Awesome. Weird but true, if you fell into a black hole, you'd stretch out like spaghetti. Hey, guys. What's up? We're just finishing some up here for more touches. <sighs> Today, we're checking out NEOs. Near Earth objects. So far, we've learned the difference between asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. And now we're checking out impact events. Impact events. That's what happens when two space objects collide. You get an impact event. Come on now, check this out. So this is our solar system, roughly. We got all the highlights. The Sun, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter. Sub Jupiter. We got them all. And beyond Jupiter, even past Neptune, is where comets originate. Asteroids are a little closer to home. They reside mostly in the asteroid belt, which hangs out between Mars and Jupiter. So usually they keep orbiting this far away, minding their own business, but sometimes interacting with different planets or space objects can alter their paths around the sun. And sometimes that sends them right in the path of Earth. Scientists estimate that roughly 33 to 70 million kilograms of space material falls to Earth each year. Most of the stuff is really small, the size of dust particles, but some can be absolutely massive. Awesome! And when big objects collide in space, that's when you get an impact event. Impact events. When celestial objects collide, in this case, Earth and meteors. Usually it's not too bad, nothing really happens, but infrequently it could be absolutely catastrophic. So that happens like never. Yeah, but luckily for you guys, we've uncovered some historic footage. Some rare footage. Hey! Awesome! Yeah, this totally works. Okay, check it out. Some historic news footage from the most important impact events throughout the history of the world, from even before the dinosaurs were alive. Wait, they had cameras back then? Eh, don't worry about it, right? Okay, check it out. Good morning, Early Earth, I'm Charlie. And I'm Kirby. And we're here for Big Bang News with your latest breaking Early Earth news stories on today's date 4.5 billion years before present. Here are today's top stories. Big news coming in from our celestial unit as Earth now has a new moon. This afternoon, a Mars-sized celestial body collided with Earth. A fraction of the debris has begun orbiting our planet and, we can hypothesize, will eventually form a moon. No one was injured during the impact because no one is alive on Earth right now. Terrible news this morning coming in from the Yucatan Peninsula as a large meteorite over 100 miles wide impacted Earth near the future site of a small Mexican village named Chicxulub. We're receiving reports from prehistoric animals that the Chicxulub impact has caused global firestorms, tsunamis, and vicious amounts of acid rain. The outlook does not look good for our dinosaur friends as well as 80% of the species of Earth. Good morning, citizens of Siberia. In local news, a 220 million pound space rock exploded last night above the town of Venavra. Researchers have found 800 square miles of forest land and 80 million trees were completely leveled by the resulting blast. Top stories coming in this morning from Sylacauga, Alabama, as sweet old Ann Hodges was hit by a softball-sized meteorite while sitting at home. The large space rock blasted through the roof of the rental property, bounced off a radio, and hit her in the leg. Luckily, Anne is doing fine with little more than a huge meteorite-shaped bruise on her leg. That totally happened! Ann Hodges, an extremely rare occurrence of a human being getting hit by a meteorite. Poor old Anne. Gotta admit, it'd be pretty cool to find one of those, though. What? A meteorite. You think? Yeah, duh. Meteorites. Yeah, but, you know, I got a guy. What? Jeff, my buddy. Jeff? Totally. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Let me just call him. It'll take like two seconds. Kirby's got a meteor guy. Jeff, what's up, man? I think we're going to let this play out for a bit, but come back when Kirby's done with her call, okay? Like two minutes. Thinking of coming Not too long. Arizona. See you soon. Weird but true, the planet Uranus was originally called George. Hey guys, welcome back. Kirby's just finishing up a call super quickly, so it should just take like a second or two, okay? 
Sounds perfect, Jeff. We'll see you soon. How's it going? What's up? That was Jeff. Jeff? My meteorite buddy. Kirby's got a meteorite guy. That's yeah. pretty cool. We just gotta whip on down to Arizona real quick. Okay, Arizona. You ready to go? Let's go. Tucson, Arizona, the old Pueblo, the Sunshine Factory. Home to a couple cacti, the University of Arizona. Go Wildcats! And Kirby's Meteor Guy. Jeff, Meteorite All-Star. Rock collecting and fossil hunting since the age of seven, Jeff wrote the book on meteorite hunting. Literally, he wrote a book called Meteorite Hunting. Jeff's favorite weird but true fact is, the sunset on Mars appears blue. Jeff! 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 Do we have company? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? It's good, good to see, see you. See you. you. How are you? Really guys, Jeff, Jeff, guys. So Kirby Great. tells me you're a meteorite specialist. We gotta ask why meteorites? I mean, what gets you so excited about it? They're amazing! Yeah. They're visitors <laughs> from outer space! What's not to love? We're gonna start with stone meteorites. Can we touch these? Please do. Uh, what is the surface? Smooth. And? Black. Black. Why? Why? Burnt. Exactly. The surface was superheated as they blasted through the atmosphere, probably to about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa. And if you turn that one over, you see the inside, and you can see how thin that rind is. Oh, is this yeah. the crust? Yes. What was the it Fusion called? crust. Fusion crust. And that is a telltale sign of recently fallen meteorites. Weird but true, even though a meteor is burning up in the sky when it's falling, by the time it makes it to the Earth, it's nice and cool to the touch. So you say these are recently fallen. This one was probably picked up within a few days of the All fall, right. and this one probably a week or so. And we know that because there's no hint of rust on it, and meteorites are rich in iron, even these stony types. So after they've been exposed to even one rainfall, they'll begin to rust a bit. Mm, I'm guessing this isn't what most look like, though. This is Maybe. actually what most meteorites on Earth look like. Mm, and most of the ones that you find, probably, right? Yes. Meteorites, by and large, are very rich in iron. Mm -hmm. And this is called a stone, a stony meteorite. Now, the magnet sticking to a rock doesn't make it a meteorite. Yeah. But it's a very good Tell Telltale sign. Yes, very indeed. Cool. Mm -hmm. Most meteorites will stick strongly to a powerful magnet. So Jeff, this is pretty sweet, but can someone like us find a meteorite if we really wanted to? Most definitely, I'm so glad you asked. Let's do it. Okay, Let's after you. You ready to go find some meteorites? Yeah, let's roll. I knew it. In addition to the metal detectors, I'm gonna give you these rock hammers. And they have powerful magnets attached. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Very powerful. Powerful. <laughs> meteorites are rich in iron, and we're gonna use the detectors to find them. So we're hoping to get a loud, sharp target with the detectors. And once we have that, we're gonna dig with these. Cool. Sounds great. Here's a weird but true fact. Even though we're in Arizona, small tiny meteorites fall to the ground all over the Earth every single day. Most fall into the ocean, so that makes the ones that we find even more rare and valuable. This is a training ground. We've buried meteorites here in order to teach you exactly how to find them, but to keep it interesting, I don't know where they are. Uh, I got no advantage except ooh. I've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> kind of feels like you're vacuuming. It does. We're just looking for rocks, but I've never been more amped up. I have something! Oh. <laughs> Freaking out! You let me see if we can pinpoint this. Hi. Yeah, you definitely got a target. Though. Yeah. With your boot, push away the surface covering maybe half an inch or an inch. And I think you already found your target. Look at this beautiful target. Wow, wow. that's some of the best wire I've seen out here. <laughs> well done. Kirby, we're looking for meteorites. Yep. We found a target, but it's not actually a meteorite. What do you think we call that? Mm, I don't know. Go what? on, guess. Flotsam and jetsam. Very good try. How about meteor wrong? Hey, now. <laughs> uh. No! Bummer. Oh, well. So many false positives today. It takes a toll Keep on a meteor going. hunter. Never give up. <laughs> hey, meteorite hunters. I got a target over here I want you to check Hello. out. Finally. Exciting. Oh. 
So what I want you to do is take your ruck pick, drag that magnet around. Slow but vigorous rake. Exactly. We're so close. Come on. <laughs> That, Sarah, is a genuine meteorite from outer space. We did it! Weird but true fact, the largest meteorite ever found is in Namibia. It's estimated at 50 tons. They're not too sure because no one's been able to move it yet. I say we go find some more. What I do you guys agree. think? Sounds very good. It's right we got in there. A big one. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey y'all. Hey! Oh, it's so huge. <laughs> this one's massive. That is how we do it. Now that you've found your own meteorites, I have a huge treat in store for you. I'm gonna send you to the most famous meteorite crater in the entire world, and it's right here in Arizona. Can we hunt there? Hunting's not allowed, it's a protected site, mm. but that doesn't matter. Believe me, you will not be disappointed. Hey, that sounds pretty good, what do you think? Let's do it. How do we get there? I'll tell you. <laughs> we gotta figure out how to get to this place, but it sounds pretty awesome, all right? We'll see you in there in a few minutes at the Meteor Crater. Awesome, back in a flash. Weird but true, moon dust smells like burned gunpowder. Yep, Jeff, we just made it. I'll talk to you soon. See you, Jeff. Oh, hey, guys, we made it. Winslow, Arizona, Behringer Crater. According to our buddy Jeff, this is one of the most well-preserved meteor craters in the entire world. 50,000 years ago, Earth, Arizona, suddenly a bright light appeared in the sky, a meteor traveling at 26,000 miles an hour. Bam, Phew. explosions rocks flying everywhere. When the dust finally settled, nothing remained but this giant crater thing. The end. Sounds pretty awesome, you wanna check it out? Heck yes. You guys wanna check it out? Let's go. Awesome, let's roll. The Behringer Crater. All right, so we kinda just went for it. But honestly, we had no idea what we were looking at. Dude, look at this place. This is huge. Until we stumbled across this guy. Yo, Kurt Vitz Eduardo. This guy's been a tour guide here for 20 years, so if you want to know about this crater, this is the guy to talk to. He's a Behringer Crater expert, and his favorite weird but true fact is astronauts' footprints stay on the moon forever. There's no wind to blow them away. Hey Eduardo, how's hey, it going? Guys, good. This good is Kirby. Hey Eduardo. It's really nice to meet you too, good guys. To you too. Eduardo, Eduardo, guys. Hi guys. So we heard this is the most well-preserved crater, right? It is the best preserved crater. Best preserved crater. On the planet. It's three miles around, a mile across, mm -hmm. and it's 550 feet deep. All right, so check out how massive this crater is. This is about the size of an Olympic swimming pool. Here's a baseball field. This is about the size of a football field. All right, back to the crater. How big was the meteor? Did they know how big it was? Yes, we gotcha. think that the meteorite was about 150 feet in diameter. Have they found pieces of it? Oh yes, in the museum itself, we have the biggest piece. There's one in New York City and there's one in Chicago, both from this impact site. Where yeah. in Chicago is it? We're from Chicago. The Field Museum. We go there all the time. Got we gotta check it out when we go yeah, home. Yeah, there you go, Charlie. <laughs> it's called the Diablo Iron. Diablo Iron. They named them. Diablo. Most of that debris from the impact is on the west side oh. by Canyon Diablo. So it came from, from, the east. from this way? It exploded underground and there was this huge uplift and flip over and that's what forms the crater. In the process, it disintegrated. Here's a weird but true fact. This whole area used to be covered in this hard rock, sandstone. Meteor hits, huge explosion. Now everything's pulverized in this rock flour. It's as fine as the flour that you bake with at home. Even weirder fact, when this stuff gets wet, it turns into quicksand. So you said this happened 50,000 years ago, right? Right. The only type of life form would have been your woolly mammoth, mm -hmm. bison, reptiles. Mm -hmm. Now anything would have not survived if they were within a 10 to 25 mile radius. Whoa. That's from the impact. So if people were around here at the time, what would it be like? They'd just be in a lot of trouble. You would have been toast. 
Been <laughs> fried, meteor fried. <laughs> Nothing like spending the afternoon exploring the best preserved crater on the entire planet with our new buddy, Eduardo. Eduardo's the man. He knew everything. This visit was so amazing. All right, guys, we got to go back to headquarters, but we'll see you in a bit, OK? Back in a flash. See you soon. Weird but true, the temperature on the moon can be hotter than boiling water. What's up, guys? We just got back from the Behringer Crater in Arizona. Eduardo is the man. The best. What about Jeff? Hunting for meteorites on the ground. My boy, Jeff. What else did we learn today? Ah, NEOs, Near Earth Objects. We got comets, which are dirty ice balls. We got asteroids, irregularly shaped planet chunks. And meteoroids, metallic space sand. And they all become meteors when they enter Earth's atmosphere. And they become meteorites when they touch the ground. Our favorite weird but true facts we learned today are one meteorite hit Earth 65 million years ago and wiped out 80% of Earth's species, including the dinosaurs. Small meteorites fall to the ground every day. Rock flour is super fine powder that was created when a meteorite hit the Earth and pulverized the sandstone rocks. Charles, glow in the dark stars. Hey! This place is gonna be magic. Oh, just like Wisconsin. <laughs> this is amazing! Oh, meteorite! Impact event! Extinction! Just like the dinosaurs. How much do you know about dinosaurs? Uh, not that much, actually. I heard they were feathered. That's weird. I wonder if it's true. Next project? Absolutely. Oh, all right, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. Come by again when we discover more things that are weird but true.